Glory. Good morning. morning. Y'all ready for church? Yes. Am I a little hot? My mic a little hot? What about the temperature? Wait, I'm talking about in here. Are y'all cold or hot or, or cold? How many cold people in here this morning? Ushers, find them a blanket. There you go. That's what we have the blankets for. Because you know what? He's hot. I already know. You know, this one's cold. You cannot please everybody. Yeah, so uh, we, we'll try and please everybody a different way. Get everybody a blanket or a fan. <laughs> you know, in, in the vehicles now, they have the cooling seats individualized. You know, when we were putting this church in, uh, Rob and Dan and uh, Dave and I were all discussing, isn't, couldn't there be an option to where you could have heated or cooled seats? <laughs> and, and we talked about it for weeks. Couldn't there be some kind? No, let's get back to work. <laughs> Hey, you can talk about anything. So everybody's well today? You guys can be seated. Thank you. Great job. Aren't they sounding amazing? They've been getting practiced up. I'm telling you, they've been having a lot of rehearsals and getting ready for the meetings and stuff. So uh, it's going to be a great meeting. I told the the volunteers and stuff before the service, you know, uh, Keith just got back. He had a great service at Brother Copeland's. They just had the minister's meeting there and uh, it went really, really well. And uh, but we heard that there's going to be a lot of people coming to the Greater Faith Conference from there. So uh, we need to be all ready and all fluffed up around and all cleaned up and all the things, you know, looking good. So if you can help this week, be ready to help because uh, it's our time to uh, serve the Lord with gladness and uh, uh, put the people uh, first place and our visitors and our guests first place and and maybe even give them the front row seats and let them receive because you get to see Keith all the time. Right? Well, you're not seeing him today, but, you know, what can I say? We're just thankful to have a church, right? Right. Well, we had a great service last week. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but God showed up. Yeah. What about the rest of y'all? Did y'all notice something? Are y'all here? Okay, good. Well, and so I was thinking about what we would do this morning, and I was thinking, you know what? Have you ever got a new appliance or something? And got it home and thought, now I've got this thing, what do you do with it? You know what I mean? Now that I've got this piece of thing, what, how do you work it? What do you do with it? How does it work? What can I do with it? And I've been thinking about that all week long. I've been thinking, you know what? I know when I received the Holy Spirit, I didn't have a clue what to do with it. You know what? You remember the story from last week. I was telling you about it, okay? How many of you were not here last week? Raise your hand. Oh, my word. Should we just... I got filled with the Holy Ghost, and I didn't know what it was, and I was dunked in a pond. What else did we say? Huh? The water was warm. I rolled under the pew. What else did I say? Huh? Oh, yeah, I didn't think about it. To receive. I didn't know what it was, so I could not receive it. Yeah. Keith was mad because I got it before him. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. But anyways, I got the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. And uh, so I would go to Keith and I'd say, huh? You weren't obedient. Oh, you. She had to bring that up. I didn't listen to the Holy Ghost, and I didn't even tell Keith I wasn't listening. Yeah, y'all re- remembered that part, right? Yeah, yeah, I didn't submit. Yeah, that part. But anyways, um, you know, I told Keith, I was telling him all about it, and I said, I left him with the thought, my mom hated you. He said, Phil, can you correct that? Well, my mom, and and I'll get into the sermon today, my mom became Keith's greatest fan, you know. I mean, she was like, as a matter of fact, my mom and dad came to the point to where they liked Keith better than me. (laughs) 
And I am not kidding you. They would cook what he liked. They would do what he liked. They would go where he liked. It was like, oh, come on, go, you know? And they wouldn't even ask me to come over. They would say, hey, Keith, will you come over? Because I know she won't, she's too busy. Come on, you make her come over, you know? And so it, they fell in love with each other, you know, needless to say. But anyway, <coughs> I received the Holy Spirit. And I'd have to go to Keith and I'd have to say, what does he do? What is he for? What did I need that for? Because, you know, I just thought it was a flaky thing. Just like you did. Right? Just thought it was kind of like a cult thing. I just thought, this is weird O. You know, and I didn't understand it. I didn't understand who the Holy Spirit was, what the Holy Spirit was, what it was, not who he was, but what it was. And, you know, Keith was the studier, and I was the listener. And so I, he would say, Phil, go pray in tongues so that we can know what we need to do. And so I'd just go pray, you know, but I didn't know what I was doing. So Life went on, and I continued working and stuff, and it was years and years and years before I really understood the benefits of the Holy Spirit, what I had actually received, what the purpose of the Holy Spirit was, what the, the good that He was to me, what an enormous, enormous, enormous gift I had received. So let's look. How many of you heard Keith Friday night? Now, I couldn't help but laugh, and half of you turned around and looked at me because you caught it. When he said, some preachers think they don't even need a scripture. I thought, oh, Lord. Because I had just told you Sunday i got to give you a scripture so that Keith doesn't get upset with me, so I gave you a scripture. Remember that? I thought, I didn't tell him I said that. So I better give you a scripture, right? Okay, let's start out with our scripture. Acts 1.8. Acts 1.8. And the New Living. Let's try the New Living. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will receive power. power. Now, my last name was Powers. So, you know, that worked well. Okay, I will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on me and I will be a witness telling people about Jesus everywhere in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Okay, so that's what we talked about last week. He's been teaching about being a witness and that's pretty much what we talked about last week. Didn't take us any longer than that. So if you want to hear about it, get the tape. But we had a lot of good things happen last week. I don't know. How many would y'all say got filled with the Spirit last week? A lot? 75, 50, 75, 80, 100? I don't know. And children. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people. But did they know what they got? You know, so we want to make sure people know what they got. And even people that's got it, do they know what they got? I mean, you can have something and not know the value of it. Like, have you ever got, give, been given a gift and somebody give you a coin or something and you go, what's the value of this? You know, or a, a bond or, or something and you don't even know what it's worth or a stock or something like that. And it's just a piece of paper to you. You don't know what the value of it is. Well, it's not good to have something that's really, really, really valuable and you just throw it in a sh drawer and lose it. And it could be worth millions to you. Well, that would be a blonde, dumb thing to do. You really should find out what the value of something is. Okay? So let's do that this morning. And um, I thought about if somebody were to ask me, since we've been in the ministry, I don't really know how long it's been, and Keith's not here so for me to ask. I'm thinking it's somewhere around 30 years since we've been in the ministry. And if someone were to ask me, what is the most valuable thing that you have learned in the ministry? What is the most valuable thing that you would say if someone were to sit you down and say, you wouldn't want to lose having learned more than anything else? 
It's how to hear from the Holy Spirit. That is the most valuable thing. And right in hand with that is trusting God to do what the Holy Spirit told you. They're like in sync with each other. Because if you can hear from the Holy Spirit, if you can hear what he's telling you, and then you have enough faith to do what he tells you to do, your life will never be the same. It won't ever be the same. Because the Holy Spirit will never, ever, ever lead you wrong. He's not full of pride. He's not out to hurt you. He's never going to take away from you. He's never going to lead you down the wrong path. He's not out to make himself look good. He would never stab you in the back. He's never going to set you out somewhere and then watch you fall and go, ha, 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 you fell. So you can trust him to do what there's nobody. And I'm going to say it very, very, very strongly. There is nobody that you know that has your back like the Holy Spirit does. Amen. Amen. There's no one that you know or that you have ever known. Not your mother, not your father, not your brother, not your sister, not your mother, not your cousin, not your aunt, not your best friend. Not anybody that you know has your back like the Holy Spirit does. No one. No one. Because no one is void of selfishness. No one is void of having some twinge of what's in it for me. But the Holy Ghost is. He will look out for what is very best for you. He will look out for what makes you look the very best. He will look out for what's going to put you the furthest, the fastest in your life. If you had to get rid of your best friend, your family, everything in the whole wide world, cling on to one thing. The Holy Spirit. Because you can get all that back if you have the Holy Spirit. You can get your family back. You can get your money back. You can get your health back. You can get your wisdom back. You can get your mind back. You can get your, your foot back. You can get your brother back. You can get anything under the sun back if you have the Holy Spirit. Because he is all wisdom. He was there from the beginning. He's, he just was there. And he knows all the answers. And read this verse with me. And then we're going to go on to the next two verses. Count them up. Count them up. <laughs> John 14, 26. This is the King James. It says, but when the Father, yeah, there we go. That's better for me. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, I like to call it the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall what? Teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. The Holy Spirit can teach you anything. There's not anything he can't show you the answer to. He can't give you the wisdom to do. He can't fix for you. He can't get you out of the mess you're in. He can't fix your finances. There is absolutely nothing that this Holy Spirit that a big portion of you received last week and some of you've had for 30 years. But it's like that... Um, let's see, that VCR you had, that blender you have, that um, 
computer you have, yeah, that you don't know how to operate and you only use two of the functions on. We want to get all the benefits out of the Holy Spirit. And we want to get all the value out of the Holy Spirit. We don't want to leave one thing sitting there like you would do on your computer or on all these other things. We want to know everything he does for us and get all the value out of him. Okay? So let's find out about it because he'll teach us all things. I can tell you just by looking at you, some of you are not using the Holy Spirit because I can look at your hair and tell. It was a joke. It was a joke. It was a joke. Oh, come on, come on, come on. It said he would teach you all things. He said he would. And I can tell some of you men ain't using him. You got on a plaid shirt and striped pants. He'll teach you all things. Ladies, you don't have to teach him how to dress if you'll trust the Holy Ghost. He can. I'm telling you, he'll teach you all things. He's smart. He'll teach you everything, you know? And that new style where they're wearing the striped ties and the plaid shirts and all that stuff. I'm going, oh, Lord, help them. It's like, who, who told them that they were the guru of fashion? Oh, uh, never mind. Some of you are looking at me funny, so we better stick to the word. I better find another verse here. Uh, John 14, 16, three verses, count them. If you've ever been around Keith at all, or listened to him at all, even two of his tapes, you've probably heard him say this. The most important thing is your, in your life is to learn how to be led. And the answer to 101 questions is? Be led. Be led. And he said it all of our lives. Because it does not matter if you've done the exact same thing 100 times. Every single time you do it, it could be different. Because you have to learn how to be led. The answer could be different with every person you're coming in contact with. And every time you cook something, it could be different because the ingredients could be just a little bit different. Or every time you do something, it could be just a little bit different. So the answer to 101 questions is be led. And he says, if there was a million and one thousand volume books of how to do everything in the universe, save your money, don't buy them. Because they will not do you any good. Like if it said uh, uh, you had a million books that you could buy, ha the answers to every marriage question. <laughs> Save your money. Don't buy it. Because they won't work for you. Because nobody knows your marriage like you do. You know why? Because God didn't create two people exactly alike. <laughs> so... How many of you, and I, and I don't mean this to be rude, and you don't have to tell it if you don't want to, but I just want to show you an example. How many of you have been married more than one time? Okay, answer me this question. After being married more than one time, do you find that you act totally different with this wife than you did the other wife, or this husband than you did the other wife, or whatever, the husband? It's like two different people. It's like you became a different person. So could you apply the very same rules to this marriage as you do to this marriage? Now, aren't you the same person? Do you understand what I'm getting at? You cannot apply a rule book to a marriage. Because it's a, it depends on the parameters that are involved in it. And that's why you have to have the Holy Spirit for every situation in your life to give you the answers. So we're going to talk about some of that stuff. Look at the verse up here. It says, And I will pray the Father... And he will give you another comforter. Well, what he's saying is he had been their comforter to this point. Jesus himself had been their comforter. And he's talking to the disciples. And he says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter. Now, read these words with me. Uh, put up the uh, Amplified, if you would. I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter. Read that word with me. Counselor. Counselor. Helper, intercessor, 
advocate, strengthener, standby, that he may remain with you forever. Verse 17, uh, put it in the King James, verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, and read this next part, and shall be where? And shall be where? And shall be where? He shall be in you. Now, wait a minute. Some of you are not very big. The others, <laughs> Rob's a big guy. I'm not meaning that in a bad way. Why did y'all pick on me that way? Some of you are pretty small. There's another person living inside of you. There is a person living inside of you. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, there is a person living inside of you. Now, again, I know I'm relating this a lot to marriage, but it'll help you to understand some things. How many of you, without your spouse ever saying a word, you know very well if you've irritated them? Raise it high so the people can see. Look at that. Look at that. You know very well if you've done something that's irritating. Okay, on the flip side, how many of you that are married, you know if you've made your spouse happy? You know it. You don't have to ask them. You don't have to do anything. You're very aware of the fact that they're happy or they're sad. You've pleased them or you've let them down. And do they have to say a word? Well, if the Holy Spirit is a person, huh? Which he is a person. I'm, I can't take the time to teach 12 different sermons today. Uh, my purpose today is to teach you what he does for you. Okay? There's excellent series out there that my husband has taught on the Holy Spirit. Go out there and get them. He'll teach you. Okay? I'm trying to encourage you about what he'll do for you. Okay? But the Holy Spirit is a person and he lives inside of you. Now, this person, when you go to do something and you're about to do it, if you're married, do you ever think, if I do this, my spouse is not going to like it? Huh? Why is that? Help me out here real loud. Huh? Huh? Why? Because you know them. You know them. You've listened to them. You've been spending time around them. You've gotten acquainted with them. And maybe even you've had a few words over something they didn't like. Right? Yeah. Or just the opposite again. If you're going to do something and you know you get all excited on the inside because you know this is going to make them happy. You got them a gift or you did something and you know, you know, you know, you know, you can hardly wait for them to get there. Like Keith this afternoon, we've done a lot of things at the house. Rob rebuilt his whole closet and it really looks nice. And the guys have done a lot of work around the house. And well, the Copelands are coming with us to stay for two weeks or plus or three or who knows how long. But anyway, you know, we've got, we've had them there working night and day and a lot of things have been going on and there's a lot of good things that's happened. And I'm excited, not just for him to see that, but I'm excited that he's coming in this afternoon. Yes, amen. amen. I texted him this morning. I said, it's raining here. He said, so does that mean you don't want me to come? Oh. <laughs> what do you think he thought the answer was to that? 
because he knows I'm excited. I'm glad he's coming home this afternoon. I texted him all day yesterday. I said, when I wake up in the morning, are you going to be here? He said, Phil, you know, we have two services in the morning, you know. So, but anyway, he knows I'm excited he's coming because I know him. I don't have to ask him, is he going to be glad about these things that are done? Because I know him. Now, it is the very same way with the Holy Spirit. Now, I've got to know him over the past 30 plus years. And I've spent a lot of time with him. I every, and I am not exaggerating, I know a lot of people tell you that, but everything I do, I just pause for just about a second or two and I say, okay. And I check my insides. Just like I would do if I was wondering if Keith would be happy with it. And I know instantly if the Holy Ghost is pleased with what I'm doing or it's, if it's like, nah, don't do that. Why? Because I know him. So when somebody comes to me and says, the Holy Ghost told me to do this, I'm like, nah, he didn't say that. You know why I can say that? For the very same reason, if somebody comes to me and says, Keith said this, I know Keith. And a lot of people tell me Keith says a lot of things. I mean, a lot of people tell our staff I say a lot of things. And enough of them know us well enough to know, like Tom standing up here making the announcements, Rob. They'll say, she didn't say that. You misinterpreted what she said. You twisted what she said. She didn't say that. Why? Because they know me. So when somebody comes and they says, the Holy Ghost told me to do this, I'm like. <laughs> and they think I'm agreeing with them. And all the while, the Holy Ghost inside of me says, that ain't me. That's their flesh. They want to do that. I told them to go do this. But what happens is, if you don't listen to the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, then what happens to you is you end up looking bad. You end up, your finances begin to go down. Your marriage begins to go down. Your kids don't prosper like they should. Your life doesn't go the way that it should. Because all the devil wants to do is make you not be good. That's his job. And just like what I said last week when I was talking about submitting. What is the very first thing I told you that the Holy Spirit told me? Submit to Keith. Submit to Keith. Now, he was teaching me right away, hey, this is me. Hey, this is me. Because he knew good and well that was not something I was going to think up with my head. Do you understand that? This is not something I'm going to want to do. It's not something I'm going to desire. It's not something I'm going to want to say, yeah, let's do this. And I didn't even know what submit meant. So as soon as I came up out of that water, I'm speaking in tongues and floundering around like a big fish. And the Holy Ghost is speaking to me. Now, not in some audible voice, but just exactly. Now, I'm trying to teach you something here. Just exactly, and I'm not a teacher, but I think you're getting it. Just exactly like that voice tells you not to buy those shoes or you're going to have that fight with your husband. Do you understand that? Does that make it clear to you? Just exactly like that voice tells you, if you do that, your wife's going to be mad. Is that an audible voice to you? But is it strong? Is it very clear? Is it confusing? 
Not at all. You know it. It's crystal clear to you that if you override that, there's going to be issues. That is exactly the way that the Holy Spirit talks to your spirit. It is exactly that same way. He's going to talk to you on the inside and he's going to say, Phyllis, submit to your husband. He didn't even call his name. He said, submit to your husband. Now, it took me 20 years to do it. 15, well, 12. <laughs> what are you laughing at? How long is it taking you? Huh? It took me 12 years of hell. Spell it. H-E-L-L on earth to do it. Hell on earth to do it. Okay? Now stop just here. What has the Holy Spirit told you? Because the same time that you got filled with the Holy Spirit, He told you something. Now have you been in hell on earth? Maybe your finances, maybe your marriage, maybe your kids, maybe your job, maybe your this, maybe your that. What did He tell you to do? Don't be as dumb as me. Be smarter than me. Be wiser than me. And whatever he told you to do, know what I told you at the start. He has your back. He is not going to hurt you. He told me to submit because it was the best thing that I could ever do in my whole life. Because Keith was not going to hurt me. By me submitting to him, it was going to begin to set the example of Christ in the church. It was going to get us where we needed to be in the ministry. And it was actually going to give me a voice that I didn't have. Even though I was talking all the time, I didn't have a voice. Huh? Huh? That very same person is living inside of you. And he's telling you things and he's showing you some things. Let's look at a few of them. I want to go over those very same words. Counselor. What is a counselor to you? The Holy Spirit that's living inside of you. He is your counselor. You don't need a, a person that you go spill your guts about your life to that can spill their guts to somebody else to. Because maybe they're your best friend today, but maybe they're their best friend tomorrow, and they're their best friend tomorrow, and they're their best friend tomorrow, and, they're, and, you're, and maybe you're divorced next week, and they're spreading it to this person, and they're spreading it to this person. And I'm not saying you shouldn't tell your spouse stuff. Tell your spouse everything. But I'm talking about that your spouse is telling somebody else something. They are your counselor. The Holy Spirit is your counselor. He will tell you. He can be your financial advisor. He can tell you where to invest your money. He can tell you how to get out of debt. He can tell you if you need extra work. He can tell you where to sow. He can tell you who to give money to. He is the best financial advisor you will ever want to meet. But you know what you got to do? You got to check inside and ask him. Because the one thing about the Holy Spirit, this is one of the major points you need to understand. He is not the devil. Now, what will the devil do? The devil will push you. And he'll tell you, do this, do this, do this. Give them that. Do this, do this, do this. Spin this, spin this, do this. But the Holy Spirit will keep quiet. Until you do what? Ask him. You got to get quiet and say, okay, what do I do about this? And it'll be at the oddest time. You'll be driving to McDonald's when you shouldn't be. <laughs> and he'll say, you know what? Why don't you sow into this? Or why don't you invest into this? 
Or why don't you sell this? It'll be at the oddest time. You will not be expecting it. And he'll just instantly tell you what to do on something. He'll show you exactly where to do it, when to do it, how to do it. From inside you. And it'll be the last thing that's on your mind. But you'll be driving along. Or you'll be shaving in the morning. I don't shave this way, but you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Or you'll be washing your hair in the shower. And he'll say, you know that issue you had with your kids? If you'll just do this, you'll get the answer you need. And you'll get exactly what you need. Because he is your counselor. You don't have to tell anybody else about it. You don't have to go to 12 people. Because you know what? The only way that another person can help you is if the Holy Ghost told them the answer for you. That's right. Because you and I both know you only tell them the part that you want them to know. And the only person that knows the whole truth is who? The Holy Spirit. So he's the only one that can give you the complete counsel about what you know. And truthfully, he's the only one, again, that's only looking out for you. And he is looking out for you. So ask him, all right? Marriage, job, kids, whatever. Then number two was helper. The Holy Spirit is your helper. You don't have a better helper than the Holy Spirit. He will help you, like I said earlier, to learn how to fix your hair. He will help you to learn how to fix a transmission. He will help you figure out the mess that you got into with the IRS. He will help you to figure out how to lose weight. He'll help you figure out the situation with your mother-in-law. He will help you with... Er- oh, what are y'all laughing about? Oh, that's your mother-in-law. Oh, oops, excuse me. I think I'll walk over here for a little bit. No, Carrie loves her mother-in-law, I know. But do you understand what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit will show you exactly what to say. He'll show you exactly how to handle it. He'll tell you, he'll show you. Okay, let me give you some examples. And I'm going to do this one night in a faith adventure. I just hadn't got to it, but I'm going to tell you about it. When Keith and I first got married, we didn't have any money. Have you ever heard that story before? He needed a haircut. Lord help my soul. He says, Phil, come here. I said, okay. And he's sitting there with a chair and scissors. He said, I need a haircut. Well, a haircut probably cost what? Huh? It was a long time ago, 10 bucks? We didn't have 10 bucks. Five bucks? We didn't have five bucks. If we had 10 or five bucks, we would eat. (laughs) And not fasted. Or put gas in our car. He said, Phil, I need a haircut. I said, okay. I said, are you sure about this? I mean, he's getting up in front of people. I said, are you sure about this? He said, yep. He said, can you do it? I said, can you pray? (laughs) And you know what? To this day, it has been the greatest thing. Because if we're on the road, we never know where we are. I think I cut his hair two weeks ago. Doesn't he look bad? (laughs) Now, somebody else does it sometimes. But sometimes he's like, i got to have a haircut now. And I'm like, okay. And I'm going, Shandai. (laughs) Every little clip that I make, still today. Because I am no trained person to cut hair. 
But you know what I'm doing? I'm praying in the Holy Ghost the whole time. Because it said he would teach me all things. And I needed to do it. Wasn't long after that, we're on the road with Brother Hagen. Now, Brother Hagen's hair is quite different. <laughs> Has anybody ever seen Brother Hagen's hair? Yes. It's called the comb over. <laughs> <laughs> now, I love Brother Hagen more than most people. But now his hair was quite an art. And I say that very, very, um, whatever the words you'd want to use. Yeah, all those words. It took mom three hours to teach me one day how to do his hair because she was not going to be able to go on the next trip. And I had to start doing Brother Hagen's hair on the road. And I did it for years on the road. And I thought, Oh, Holy Ghost, <laughs> you have got to help me. Because you talk about somebody even more ticky than Keith about their hair was Brother Hagen. If it was one little twig, like, he's got, see this little twig standing up right here? <laughs> What, what, what's that? Um, the Palins, uh, the little girl, Piper. Y'all yeah. remember her? Yeah. In, in that show, you remember her sister yeah. went like this? Yeah. <laughs> Keith and I are all the time kidding. I'm saying, I'm going to do a Piper on you. Because <laughs> we saw that one time. Anyway, Brother Hagen would say, don't you see that twig? <laughs> and I'm like, excuse me, sir. I mean... He wanted it perfect. I mean, that was the way Brother Hagen trained me on everything I did for him. You think I'm tough. You should have hung around him. I mean, perfect. He wanted it perfect. So we learned how to do perfect hair. Now, I'm no hairdresser. Look. <laughs> You'd think I'd follow the Holy Ghost for my own hair. Then the Lord says, start a church. I don't have a clue how to start a church. We've traveled to churches. We've seen the messes most of them have been in. We've seen that the, the piano players run off with the, the song leader. We've seen that the accountants run off with all the money. We've seen that the youth pastors molested the kids. And I'm like, Lord, please don't make us do this. But it's just like the submission thing. It's the greatest thing we've ever done in our lives is these two churches. But you know what we did? We went to him and we fasted and prayed for months and months and months and months and months. And we said, Lord, how do you want to do it? We don't care how everybody else in the world's doing it. How do you want us to do it? How do we set up these churches? How do we do this? So he told us about the teams. And he told us how to do the youth. And he told us how to do the kids. So what did we do? We did what he said do. That's how you don't have the mistakes other people have. That's how you don't have the mess-ups in your life that other people have. Amen. Now, it would have been real easy for us. I'll take our youth group, for instance. It would have been real easy for us when we started the Branson Church. I bet we got 10,000 questions when you start a youth group. We didn't start a youth group for three years because I couldn't get clear on it. We had youth everywhere coming out of the woodwork, but I couldn't get clear on it because every youth group that we saw, there were problems. And they'd come to the altar and they'd moan and they'd cry. And they'd go away and they'd cut and they'd do drugs and they'd get pregnant. And we'd been around the ministry long enough to know that I didn't want our youth group doing that.
And I said, Lord, what do we do? And he said, you don't have a youth leading youth. I said, what? Just one morning, I was in the shower. And I wasn't even praying about youth. I wasn't thinking about youth. I didn't have youth on my heart. I didn't have youth on my mind. And he says, you don't have a youth leading youth. Do you want a pastor that doesn't know anything about the word? No. Huh? No. So do you want a youth leading the youth that doesn't know anything about the word? No. You want somebody leading the youth that knows how to get them transitioned from being a youth to being an adult. And that's what the Lord told me. So I wind up doing the youth for year after year after year after year. And you know what? I found out the youth didn't want a youth leading the youth. They had the most fun telling me how dumb I was. They did. They had the most fun. I remember one time I said something, I said something about an eight track and they said, Mrs. Moore, there's no such thing as an eight track. I said, well, there was an eight track, you know? And they'd tell me all these things about phones and they'd tell me all these things and they just loved teaching me. And I realized it right away. I mean, like the second service, that the Lord showed me instantly. That is what it's supposed to be. They are supposed to be teaching me from the Word because they need to know how to teach people in the world from the Word that they can prove to them that the Word is true in their life. Not just that they heard Brother Moore say it or they heard Miss Phyllis say it. They needed to know how that they could find a scripture in the Word that says, by Jesus' stripes I was healed. I don't have to be sick because Jesus said I don't have to be sick. Not because uh, Pastor Phyllis said I don't have to be sick. Or not because Pastor Keith said I don't have to be sick. But because they know where it is in the Word. And they can find it for themselves. And some dummy at school can't say you're an idiot because you go to that church. Amen. They're confident enough to where that they can stand up. If anything ever arises and say, no, I know what I believe because I see it in here for myself. Yeah. Not because mama believes it or daddy believes it or my cousin believes it or my aunt believes it. No. They know how to believe it for their self. The Holy Spirit will show you how to do anything you need to do. If you need to start a business, if you need to build a house, if you need... Do you remember that testimony Friday night about the lady that got the land? She said the Holy Spirit told her just build four walls. He will show you exactly what you're supposed to do without wasting one minute of your effort and one minute of your time because He has your back. Yes. Amen. He has your best interest at heart. He will never hurt you. He will never waste your money. He will never waste your time. He will never waste your efforts. He will never waste your, your mind time. He will never waste your love. He will never waste anything about you. Because He's all about getting you where you need to be. He is your helper. But you got to look to Him. You got to say, Holy Ghost, how do I fix this hair? <laughs> Holy Ghost, show me how to put on my makeup like all those people do. Holy Ghost, show me how to do this. Holy Ghost, show me how to do that. Holy Ghost, I see all them people cooking all that stuff. Show me how to cook all this stuff and save money. He will show you anything you ask Him to show you. That's what the benefit of having him live inside you is. You don't have to pick up the phone and call anybody anywhere. You can be in the grocery store walking down the aisle and be about to forget something. And if you're to say, Holy Ghost, am I forgetting anything? He'll say, yeah, you forgot your tomatoes. Oh, yeah. Because he's about you and he don't want you wasting your time. He'll say, go back and get those tomatoes. But you've got to what? you got to stop and check inside and ask him and listen. And he'll show you. But you got to let him help you. You know, 
I have been in the past, I'm not going to confess it over my future. You saw how I said that. One of the worst people about letting people help me. Because I don't like wasting people's time. I don't like, I like things done a certain way. I like just a lot of reasons, you know, because just, just. Okay, I'll just spill it out to you. Because a lot of people want to do it for the wrong reason. Okay? They don't want to help me because they want to help me. They want to help me because they want a position and a place to get close to Keith. Okay, I said it. And it's not good. But the Holy Ghost wants to help me because he wants to help me. Okay? And so, when I'm looking... I've been the worst about letting people help me. But you have to be the same way. If I'm going to let people help me, I have to do what? Receive it. I have to look to them. I have to ask them. And it's the same way with the Holy Spirit. You have to look to Him. You have to ask Him. You have to let him help you. You can't be Mr. or Mr. Know-it-all. If you already know it, he can't help you. Does that make sense? If you already know how to cook a biscuit, he ain't going to show you. Because they already know. If you already know how to make money, he ain't going to show you. If you already know how to fix your hair, he ain't going to show you. If you know, already know how to raise your kids, he ain't going to interrupt you and show you. Huh? But, 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 if you're smarter than me, then you'll ask him. Because there's always a better way to do things. And he'll save you money, and he'll save you time, and he'll save you effort, and he'll show you how you can do things without wasting one thing. Okay? All right, so he's your helper. Then the next thing he is, this one you're really going to like. He is your advocate. Your advocate. What does advocate mean? He is your supporter, your backer, your promoter, your believer in, your advocate, and your campaigner. If I had to say anything, that's what my mother became to Keith. You do not, if you have a call on your life, if you have something that you feel like God's called you to do, you do not need one person to be told about it. You don't have to send out flyers. You don't have to send out emails. You don't have to go out and push everybody trying to get to people with the right names. Amen. You need to say, Holy Spirit, what do I do? Where do I show up? He told Keith, show up at healing school every day. Show up at healing school every day. Yep. Sit there, right there on the front row. Show up at healing school every day. Hmm, okay. Now, who would have thought sitting at healing school every day would get him where he is today? Now, how many other people were sitting at healing school? Where are they? What is the Holy Spirit telling you to do? You can't do the opposite of what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do and get where you're supposed to be. You remember at the very front, I said this one thing. I said one of the greatest things that the Lord has given me and that I value is hearing from the Holy Spirit. But what else did I say was on the other hand? Trusting God. 
to do what he tells me to do. That is the very hardest part. So put, write it, put stars around it, draw stripes around it, hear from the Holy Spirit, but then trust God. Yes. Carrie does not have to trust Rob. Amen. Right. Not one ounce. Never another day in her life does she have to trust Rob. She has to trust God. Amen. If God tells her, Carrie, you, you guys are supposed to go and help them in this church. She does not have to trust that Rob does anything right. Who she has to trust is God. She has to trust that if God told her to do it, he will make him do what he's supposed to do. How many of you wives has ever really, really, really been able to make your husbands do anything? <laughs> Tell me how. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yes. It doesn't really, really work, you know? Same thing with, with wi husbands with wives. You know, it just doesn't really, really, really work. I mean, prayer works and God doing it and making them do it works. But you just fussing and pitching fits and trying to make them do something doesn't really work. But you trusting God, because God told you to do something. And God then dealing with them that this is the right thing that we do, begins to start changing people. They begin to start seeing things differently. If they got to wake up in the nighttime, if he's got to send somebody else across their path. You don't, you know what? Hold on to your chair. You don't have to trust your boss if God told you to work there. I don't care if every person around you is cussing and using foul language. There could be a very good reason why God sent you there. I know he sent me in places like that. When I got there, every person there cussed, smoked, used foul language. By the time I left, every person there was filled with the Holy Ghost and going to church. And not because I preached to them. The witness before them. You may own a business and the best people out there may smoke and drink and cuss. You may say, I know I'm supposed to hire them. The Holy Ghost, I know inside me I'm supposed to hire them. Hire them. Live it before them. It won't be a month. They'll start saying, hmm, they're different. I never had a boss like them before. They actually do care about me. Live it before them. They'll start changing. Their attitude will start changing. They'll quit cussing around you. I've dealt with, I mean, I have dealt with businessmen. I've dealt with businessmen that cuss every other word that comes out of their mouth. They'll get on the phone with me and know who I am, and they'll go, excuse me. And they'll cuss one time, and then they'll quit cussing. They'll say, excuse me, I didn't mean to say that. And they will change their whole demeanor. They will change their whole vocabulary the whole time they're on the phone with me. Why? Because of God. Not because of me. I don't put any pressure on them to change anything. But it's because of me trusting God. But now I'll tell you something else. I don't sit at home and listen to TV programs with that in it either. I don't go places that people talk that way. So God honors me in that I don't want to hear that. It's not, it's not, yeah, sometimes she wants to hear it and sometimes she doesn't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't sit there and watch TV four hours hearing it. So he honors me in that when I'm around people, I don't have to hear it. I don't trust that person not to do it though. I trust God 
to make them change. You never have to try to make another person change. You never have to try to make the people at work around you change. You never have to try to make your brother change or your sister change. What you have to do is be the Holy Spirit witness that God has called you to be. And He will cause the whole atmosphere around you to begin to change. He will cause people around you to begin to change. He will cause circumstances to begin to change just because you are who He called you to be. And that's what happens when you get the Holy Spirit inside you. He will be your advocate. You do not have to speak up for yourself. God will speak up for you. He will fix it for you. You don't have to stand up for yourself and say, you can't talk that way in front of me. I'm a Christian. What are they going to do? Talk more. They're going to get more vulgar and they're going to say, I don't believe in Christians. And it ain't no wonder the way some Christians act. I wouldn't believe in some of them either. But you understand what I'm saying? You don't have to stand up for you. God will stand up for you. He's your advocate. What better advocate to have than the Holy Spirit? I mean, if the Holy Spirit deals with somebody, what happened when the Holy Spirit deals with somebody? What can the Holy Spirit do to somebody? Shake them, rattle them around, knock them out. The Holy Spirit's pretty tough. And all he's got to do is go. (laughs) Right? I mean, he don't have to punch him. He don't have to do anything. But if somebody's really, really giving you a hard time and they're just talking bad about you and they're just doing stuff, you just smile and be just so kind and represent God the way you're supposed to. And let the Holy Spirit be your advocate. And all he's got to do is go. (laughs) And they could be out like a light. And be waking up and saying, what happened to me? And you say, oh, that's just the Holy Ghost. You were just the Holy Spirit. And they'll go, the what? Give you a chance to witness to them. All right? Advocate. All right? Then we have a very important one. Intercessor. You thought you could pray. What if every day you realized? Now stop for just a minute and close your eyes. Is there anything bad going on in your life? Anything you'd really, really, really like changed? Now close your eyes. Think. Close them. Close them. Think. Anything that you'd like changed in your life? Think. Now think about this in association with it. You have the Holy Spirit interceding for you every day. You do. On that matter. If you will let him. You have the Holy Spirit interceding for you on that matter every day. Now what better prayer is there? You can open your eyes. Is there a better prayer than the Holy Spirit? No. He's part of the Godhead. Okay, now I'm Catholic, was Catholic. My mama said I'd die Catholic. The only thing I knew about the Holy Spirit was he was over here somewhere. Some of you don't know what that means. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay? But if you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you and you're depressed or you're sick or you have marriage problems or you have financial problems or you have physical problems or you have job problems or you have kid problems or you have a mold or you have a short pinky whatever your problem is Do you understand what I'm getting at? Or you can't find a blouse you like. Or there's not a parking place that you like. Or you're getting gray hairs. Or you got a wrinkle you don't like. 
There is one inside of you that is continuously, is that not what it says? He's, Jesus is going to leave. And did the disciples have the opportunity, if there was ever anything going on in their life, to walk up to Jesus and say, Jesus, this is going on. How do I handle it? And he'd say, let's pray. Now, what he said was, I'm not going to leave you without something better than what the disciples had. Isn't that what he said? Yes. I'm going to give you something better than what they had. Now, everybody in here at the same time couldn't come to me and say, Mrs. Moore, I have this problem. Could you pray with me? Because I'd have to stop and I'd, say, I'd have to pray with her. Then I'd have to pray with her. Then I'd have to pray with him. Then I'd have to pray with her. Then I'd have to pray with her. Then I'd have to pray with him. And even still, that's me praying. But Jesus said, I'm going to give you something way better than even me being there beside you every single day. I'm going to give you someone inside of you who lives inside of you that all you got to look to is say, Holy Spirit, pray. Help me pray. Intercede. And he will help you pray anything that you need to pray about anything in your life, and it can change. Now, that's better than you coming to me and me trying to pray for you because the Holy Spirit is a better prayer than I am. And any intercessor that you know, any intercessor in the whole wide world that can pray is not as good a prayer as the Holy Spirit. They're not. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the best prayer you'll ever want to meet. Read 1 Corinthians 14. The best. He's your interceder. Get quiet. Pray in the Spirit. You will receive your answer. But the problem is what? You got to do it. You got to do it. You can't just... It's easier just to go to somebody else and try to get them to do it for you. But why would you want somebody else to do that for you when you can get the more clear answer yourself? Because the thing about God that I don't think most people understand is... God never has wanted to embarrass anybody or make anybody look bad or put anybody down. So he's not going to air your dirty laundry to anyone. Amen. It's not what he does. So he gave each person, you have the Holy Spirit, 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 you have the Holy you, you, you. Okay, so you told a lie, you stole something, you, you didn't listen to your husband, you didn't do this at your job and got mad at somebody. Now he's going to say, pray for me. She's going to say, pray for me. She's going to say, pray for me. He's not just going to automatically tell me, he did this at work, she did this at work, he did it. Why? Out of honor and respect for them. Do you understand that? Yes. But if you shut up in your prayer closet, he is going to tell you, go apologize to your boss. He is going to tell you, submit to your husband. He is going to tell you, put that money back. He is going to tell you, whatever I said you did, told a lie or whatever, you know, make it right. And it'll fix the situation. He is going to do that inside of you. Yeah. Why? Because he has you back. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. He has it. He has your back. And he knows until you fix this, you're on the devil's turf. You're just wide open game for the devil. And he, even if you came to me 
And I told you something off the top of my head. It's not going to fix it like this in here and the Holy Spirit talking to you one-on-one -on -one in your prayer closet and giving you the answer. Fix this. Do this. If you're sick, if you need finances, you ask Him. And He's going to tell you the answer that applies directly to you in your life. Can you say amen? amen. And then the next one, the strengthener. We're getting there. We got two more. The strengthener reinforces. How many of you could use a little extra strength? What does Jude 20 say? Uh oh, that's another verse. Yeekers. Put it up there if you guys can. Jude 20 is just chapter 1, verse 20. King James. Jude chapter 1, verse 20. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy, most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's what this is talking about. Reinforce, fortify, brace, toughen up, build up. That's what the Holy Spirit will do for you. There ain't a vitamin in the universe. In the whole, I mean, what is that stuff that people can drink, those energy drinks? Red Bull, Five Hour. I'm listening. I don't drink them, so I don't know. I got enough. You see me. You wouldn't want me on any of that stuff. Rob's shaking his head no. We already work around the clock most of the time. So, but you understand what I'm saying. You would not need any of those things. Praying in the Holy Ghost is like hooking you up to those defibrillators. It's like you go, boom, up. And it jolts you. You come out of there energized. I don't care if you're 49 or 149. It gives you energy that you didn't know you had. You can't run on this physical body strength. You cannot live on this physical human body strength. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Your body getting tired? Your body getting weak? Maybe it's because that person living on the inside, have you ever just eaten, 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 and you're still tired? Huh? Well, maybe it's because that other person living on the inside of you is hungry too. Huh? There's two people in there. And you can feed this flesh and feed this flesh and feed this flesh. But that other person on the inside is starving to death. And they're screaming and they're yelling, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Feed me, feed me, feed me. And you're getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And you can't figure out why. And you take all the vitamins under the sun. And you're still weaker. And you sleep and you sleep and you sleep and you sleep. And you're still weaker. And you don't understand it. Well, you got to feed that other person inside you. And there's only one thing that feeds him. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Building yourself up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. That's how you do it. And I tell you some ways you can do it. You don't want nobody around when you're praying. Turn your radio off in your car. When you get in the shower, pray as loud as you can pray. Find times that you're by yourself. People think they got to get on their knees and they got to get in their closet. Find times. If you got five minutes here and you got five minutes there and you got five minutes here, hey, how many of those vitamins are time released? <laughs> huh? Aren't they time released? Don't they just re release a little here and release a little there and release a little here and release a little there? Why can't you pray a little here and pray a little there and pray a little here and pray a little there and pray a little here? You can do that all day long. Just pray in the Holy Spirit when you go in the bathroom. How many of you go to the bathroom more than once a day? <laughs> I'm not trying to be crude, but how many of you take somebody with you? Huh? I 
I'm serious. Can't you pray? You can pray for five minutes when you go in the bathroom. You can pray for 15 minutes. Some women, 35 minutes when you're in the shower. When you're doing your makeup. I mean, there's just times that you should be taking advantage of praying in the Spirit. And if you just do that, a little shot here and a little shot there and a little shot here, instead of going grab that five-hour energy drink or grabbing that this or grabbing that that, you just start praying in the Holy Spirit. And you'll see the difference in the boost that you're getting because it's the inside of you that needs to be strengthened. And not only will it strengthen you, but you'll be surprised when you get done with that, you'll have the answer that you needed before you went in there. You'll know what to do. That's what the Holy Ghost is good for. Then the next one. Stand by. This one is so good. He's that reserve. He's that fallback. He's that replacement or that stand-in and that backup and that spare. And Keith says, I use this one a lot. That emergency power. He's always telling me, Bill, you can't fly the plane on reserve fuel and then run out of reserve fuel. You've got to stop sometime and fill up again. He says, you use that one too much. You got to stop and fill up again. They don't just fly forever on reserve. I use this one a lot. It really, really does work. He will be there when you think you don't have the extra energy to do it. When you think, I've spent all I have to spend. I've done all I can do. I can't do any more and I still have, the kids have got this. Has he ever come through for you? Has he ever been there for you when you think, I just don't have another ounce to give. I just don't have another answer to give. I just don't have anything else to do. He's right there inside you to boost you up and give you that jolt that you need to be able to make it through the week. Every time. He's that backup power. He's that generator that stirs you back up again. Gets you going again. But you got to pray. You got to build yourself back up. If you'll just pray, he will be inside you. Maybe you're going to the refrigerator for the 26th time today and you think, I don't want to eat that. I don't want to eat that. And your head keeps saying, I don't want to eat that. I don't want to eat that. I don't want to eat that. All the way while you're walking there, instead of saying, I don't want to eat that, say, glory to God. Shandai, Rondai, untie my bow tie. (laughs) Or pray in the Holy Spirit. You don't understand what I'm saying. The whole time that you're going to the refrigerator. Praying in the Holy Spirit builds you up. It gives you greater strength on the inside to do things that this physical body cannot do. So anything that you're wanting to quit as you're going to do it, just start praying in the Spirit. It'll help you to stop doing it. Maybe you just got mad with somebody and you're about to blow a fuse with them again. Just start praying under your breath. You don't have to pray loud, you know, to where the people on the next block can hear you. Do you understand that? You can pray in the Spirit and it can change the future events that are about to happen. Can you say amen? Amen. 